Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by St. Joseph's intercession, your church be constantly watch over the unfolding of the mysteries of human salvation, whose beginnings you entrusted to his faithful care, through Christ our Lord. The Most Reverend Father Paolo Martinelli will now profess to uphold the Catholic and Apostolic faith as the Apostolic Vicar of Southern Arabia by making the profession of faith and taking the oath of fidelity to the Apostolic See as required by law before taking canonical possession of his new office. contained in the symbol of faith, namely, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceed from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, an apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With firm faith, I also believe everything contained in the word of God, whether written or handed down in tradition, which the Church, either by a solemn judgment or by the ordinary and universal magisterium, sets forth to be believed as divinely revealed. I also firmly accept and hold each and everything definitively proposed by the Church regarding teaching on faith and morals. Moreover, I adhere with religious submission of will and intellect to the teachings which either the Roman Pontiff or the College of Bishops enunciate when they exercise their authentic magisterium, even if they do not intend to proclaim these teachings by a definitive act. I, Paolo Martinelli, in assuming the office of Apostolic Vicar of Southern Arabia, promise that in my words and in my actions, I shall always 
preserve communion with the Catholic Church. With great care and fidelity, I shall carry out the duties incumbent on me toward the Church, both universal and particular, in which, according to the provisions of the law, I have been called to exercise my service. In fulfilling the charge entrusted to me in the name of the Church, I shall hold fast to the deposit of faith in its entirety. I shall faithfully hand it on and explain it, and I shall avoid any teachings contrary to it. I shall follow and foster the common discipline of the entire Church, and I shall maintain the observance of all ecclesiastical laws, especially those contained in the Code of Canon Law, with Christian obedience. I shall follow what the bishops, as authentic doctors and teachers of the faith, declare, or what they, as those who govern the Church, establish. I shall also faithfully assist the diocesan bishops so that the apostolic activity exercised in the name and by mandate of the Church may be carried out in communion with the Church. So help me God and God's holy gospels on which I place my hand. Let us pray. O God, shepherd and ruler of all the faithful, look favorably on your servant Paolo, whom you have set at the head of your church of Arabia as her shepherd. Grant, we pray, that by word and example he may be of service to those over whom he presides, so that together with the flock entrusted to his care, he may come to everlasting life through Christ our Lord.
the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, After 18 years of my ministry as your bishop of this vicariate, I can't say I have the satisfaction and joy of being your bishop and your companion in the journey of faith. I thank God for guiding me in my ministry. I'm grateful to all my priest brothers and religious sisters who supported me in serving this vicariate. I am grateful to all the lay people for their voluntary service in the vicariate, which most of the time goes unrecognized, and all Catholics who simply by their life of faith have inspired me. I can tell you that without you, I would not be able to do anything. As I hand over the mantle to my successor, I only ask you to pray for me as I will pray for you. Today is a joyful day for our vicariate. We thank God for sending us a worthy shepherd to continue his mission in the vicariate of Southern Arabia. Bishop Martinelli, whom I know for many years, is a wonderful Capuchin friar, and for the past eight years, he has also a, a, a good bishop he was a professor at the Pontifical Gregorian University and the University of Antonianum. With his experience as a Capuchin brother, a priest, a professor, and a bishop, he will be able to guide our vicariate in the right direction. I ask you, my dear people, to stand with your new bishop in every good decision he takes for our vicariate. Obey him as an elder, love him as your brother, and support him as your companion in the journey of faith. And to you, my dear brother Paolo, these are the people put into your care. This is your family now. I can assure you that you will never feel the dearth of life, of love and care in this land. May God give you the strength and wisdom to fulfill his mission put into your care. Let now the apostolic letter of appointment be shown and read. The apostolic letter in its original is in Latin. I shall be reading out its English translation. The original apostolic letter is here. Francis, Bishop of Rome, servant of the servants of God, to the venerable brother Paolo Martinelli, OFM Cap, currently titular bishop of Mustitano in Numidia and auxiliary of Milan, destined to be the apostolic vicar of Southern Arabia, greetings and apostolic blessing. Rejoicing with the renewed youth of the soul, and awaiting with the hope of certain joy the day of the resurrection, we confidently dedicate ourselves to the example of life, word, and charity, to the missionary work of communicating to all men and nations the love of God, manifesting in us the new man put on at baptism, that those who see our good works can perceive more fully the real meaning of human life 
and the universal bond of community of mankind. Sustained by this trust in God and basing our souls on such a high council of apostolic pastoral mission in governing the entire church, with fatherly love, we turn our minds to the spiritual needs of the apostolic vicariate of Southern Arabia, which is currently vacant after the resignation of the venerable brother Paul in the OFM cap, and is waiting for the new pastor who can lead the spiritual progress of the church in a fruitful and just way. <clears throat> we have therefore thought of you, venerable brother, who appear to us to be adorned with human virtues and with other priestly gifts to make you suitable for these services. Hence, having listened to the advice of the Congregation for the Evangelization of Peoples, in the fullness of our apostolic authority, having dissolved the ecclesial bond of the titular bishop and the office of auxiliary bishop, we constitute you apostolic vicar of Southern Arabia with all the rights and obligations proper to the office. We wish to inform of this decree to the entire clergy and the people of God of this great region of antiquity, all of whom we exhort to, to have you as a father to love and welcome you with the order of sincere charity. May the Lord grant you, venerable brother, to be a man after the heart of Christ and the reflection of his love and the gift of salvation and with the intercession of Our Lady of Arabia to receive the superabundance of grace and communicate it to your flock. Given in Rome at the Lateran on the 1st of May, 2022, the 10th year of our pontificate, Pope Francis.
let us pray. O God, who in your wonderful providence decreed that Christ's kingdom should be extended throughout the earth, and that all should become partakers of his saving redemption. Grant, we pray, that your church may be the universal sacrament of salvation, and that Christ may be revealed to all as the hope of the nation and their Savior, who lead and reign with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of the Kings. Rejoice, Jerusalem. Be glad for her, all you who have loved her. Rejoice, rejoice for her, all you who mourned her. That you may be suckled, filled from her consoling breast. That you may savor with delight her glorious breasts. For thus says the Lord, now, towards her, I send flowing peace like a river, and like a stream in spate the glory of the nations. At her breast will her nurslings be carried and fondled in her lap. Like a son comforted by his mother will I comfort you, and by Jerusalem you will be comforted. At the sight, your heart will rejoice, and your bones flourish like the grass. To his servants, the Lord will reveal his hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. The only thing I can boast about is the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom the world is crucified to me and I to the world. It does not matter if a person is circumcised or not. What matters is for him to become an altogether new creature. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, who firm the Israel of God. I want no more trouble from anybody after this. The marks on my body are those of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, my brothers. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The Lord appointed 72 others and sent them out ahead of him in pairs to all the towns and places he himself was to visit. He said to them, the harvest is rich, but the laborers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers to his harvest. Start off now. But remember, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Carry no purse, no haversack, no sandals. Salute no one on the road. Whatever house you go into, let your first words be, peace to this house. And if a man of peace lives there, your peace will go and rest on him. If not, it will come back to you. Stay in the same house, taking what food and drink they have to offer, for the laborer deserves his wages. Do not move from house to house. Whenever you go into a town where they make you welcome, eat what is set before you. Cure those in it who are sick and say, the kingdom of God is very near to you. But whenever you enter a town and do not, do not make you welcome, 
Go out into its streets and say, we wipe off the very dust of your town that clings to our feet and leave it with you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God is very near you. I tell you that on that day, it will not go as hard with Sodom as with that town. The 72 came back rejoicing. Lord, they said, even the devil, devils submit to us when we use your name. He said to them, I watched Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Yes, I have given you power to tread underfoot serpents and scorpions and the whole strength of the enemy. Nothing shall ever hurt you. Yet, do not rejoice that the Spirit submits to you. Rather, rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, May the Lord grant you peace and Paschal joy. Today's Eucharist. Eucharistic celebration marks the beginning of my ministry as apostolic vicar in Southern Arabia. I should like to start with a, a thanksgiving note. I wish to express my gratitude to the Lord for calling me, and to His Holiness, the beloved Pope Francis, for sending me on this unexpected appointment, which I accept with all humility and willingness to serve. I thank Bishop Paul Hinder for extending his welcome to me personally. I am thrilled to have his support and wise counsel. counsel. Your Excellency, allow me to express my admiration for the great work you have demonstrated in these past 18 years as Apostolic Vicar of, to Southern Arabia. I aspire to learn from your great experience. My extended gratitude goes to all the priests, men and women religious, and the lay faithful in this vicariate. And a special thank you to the Capuchin Order who has tirelessly served this region. In today's readings, God invites us to be joyful. Other prophets, Isaiah tells us, Rejoice, Jerusalem! Be glad for her, all you who love her. Hence, our God is a God of joy, not of sorrow. How does God direct us to be joyful by entering and transforming our lives. It is impossible to obtain this joy by ourselves. Rather, it is a gift from God to be accepted and embraced. His love and mercy heals our wounds, feeds our hunger, and quenches our thirst. His closeness and tenderness bring us consolation. Like a son comforted by his mother, will I comfort you, and by Jerusalem you will be comforted. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, I want to put Paschal joy at the core of my ministry. 
to quote the great apostles. We do not intend to be masters over your faith. Instead, we are the collaborators of your joy. How should this specific mission be understood? In today's gospel, Jesus sends his disciples in pairs to announce the kingdom of God is very near to you. It is a great announcement of joy. It is not the disciples who choose to go by themselves. No one can dispatch oneself. It is Jesus who sends his disciples. Similarly, the Father in the Holy Spirit sent Jesus into his world. To borrow from the Holy Father's apostolic exhortation, Evangelii Gaudium, my mission of being in the heart of the people is not just a part of my life or a badge I can take off. It is not an extra or just another moment in life. Instead, it is something I cannot uproot from my being without destroying my very self. I am a mission on this earth. That is the reason why I am here in this world. To summarize, we are always sent by someone, with someone, and to someone. Mission to be sent is not something to do, rather it is a way of life, a way of understanding oneself, and a way of cultivating relationships in time and space. In order to leave my mission, I must be in total communion with the whole church, Pope Francis, the other bishops, priests, deacons, and all consecrated persons. I also aim to live a daily communion with all the people of God in this region. A bishop's first duty is to attend the past to the pastoral care of his flock by promoting Christian life in all its dimensions, a life of prayer, listening to and contemplating the word of God and uh, the celebration of the sacraments, especially the Holy Eucharist. It is precisely in the Eucharist that we find beauty, joy, and the fullness of being Christians. Let us grow together in our Christian life, promoting the beauty of belonging to the one body of Christ, albeit made up of different cultures, spiritual traditions, and liturgical rites. The different gifts must never divide, but unite us to be more fruitful, pluriformity in unity. The Holy Spirit brings forth many different gifts and charisms, but the same Spirit creates an overall unity. The Holy Spirit is harmony itself, wrote an ancient father of the church. Let us be docile to the Holy Spirit and to the church whose task is discernment. We are, as people of God in Arabia, a very important sign for the future of the church spreading throughout the world because only a diverse church composed of Christians from different countries and cultures can withstand such an epoch change. 
I should now like to delve deeper into the mystery of Pascal joy. In his letter to the Galatians, St. Paul highlights the challenges the church was facing. It does not matter if a person is circumcised or not. What matters is for him to become an altogether new creature. What does it mean to be a new creature? In his other letters, St. Paul writes that to be completely new creatures, we must pass from the old person to a new one. Being new creatures means being born again, receiving and accepting the gift to become anew. We encounter the Lord every time we receive the grace of being loved by him. Baptism makes us new creatures. Reconciliation makes us new persons. And God's love completely transforms us anew. In temporal life, we grow from younger to gradually becoming older. But in the spiritual life, the opposite is true. From old person, weighed from by his world, we become young. We become new persons. We are transformed into new creatures. There is no greater joy than to be born again in Christ. The new creature received the vocation to be joyful, a joy that is made possible despite suffering, tribulation, and pain, because, as the Church teaches us, God's love never fails, even in trying times. Thereby, we can describe the church as the home of Pascal joy. Connected with the theme to becoming new creatures, called to holy joy, I would like to explain my Episcopal motto. The glory of God is the living human being. The life in man is the glory of God, which is taken from Saint Irenaeus of Lyon, a father of the Christian East. What does the phrase mean and why, I, why did I choose it as my motto? Saint Irenaeus was a very practical man. He lived a personified spirituality rooted in the mystery of the incarnation. This means that the glory of God shines when man lives, lives his existence according to the will of God. The life in man is the glory of God. The life of man is the vision of God. Every time we discover the encounter with Jesus, we meet Jesus through the sacraments, through the life of the church, through meetings with true witnesses of the joy of the gospel, and in those who are in need, we receive life in us. Jesus came to bring life and life in abundance. We do not have to look at the faith as a heavy burden placed on our shoulders in order to make our lives more difficult. On the contrary, faith is the gift 
that makes our lives more human as they glorify God in the highest. Hence, the transformation from being an old person to a new creature expresses this gift. When we live in communion with one another, we are living human persons, and thus God makes his glory shine. When we love each other with a sincere love, we are living people, and we give glory to God. When we help one another, we are truly alive, and we give glory to God. God does not want death, violence, or enmity. Rather, he wants us to be truly living people. He wants us all to live in a more fraternal world. Human beings are truly living people when they welcome one another, when they overcome boundaries and divisions as it was highlighted in the document of Abu Dhabi signed by Pope Francis and Grand Imam Hamad al Tayeb. A more fraternal world is a more human world. A more human world gives glory to God who has created Humanity to live in peace and justice. Even in the time of pandemic, we have learned that we are all in the same boat and that we need each other to heal and to make this world more fraternal and more human. I wish to end this homily by returning to today's gospel message, Paschal Joy. The disciples that Jesus sent to announce the kingdom of God were rejoicing at the success they achieved. But Jesus invites them to a different type of joy by telling them Yet do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you. Rejoice rather that your names are written in heaven. What does it mean to have our names written in heaven? Jesus invites us not to find our joy in worldly, human or pastoral successes, rather act with purity of intention and always be free from the outcome to have all our names one by one written in heaven is a beautiful image god himself has written these names on the palms of his hands the name has enormous important importance in the spiritual tradition of our peoples. The name indicates the most personal reality of each of us. We are called by name. Our parents gave us a name. We were called by name on the day of our baptism. Our name expresses the mystery of our person. We are not some casual or meaningless product of evolution. Each of us is the result of the soul thought of God. Each of us is willed. Each of us is loved. Each of us is necessary. Dear sisters and brothers, true joy comes from love. 
We are all called to be holy in love. Let us all work together to be a holy people who humbly testify the joy of the gospel to the world. I ask God for the grace to be a shepherd according to the heart of Jesus. And I ask for the blessing of the Lord Most High for all Catholics, all Christians, and for all the inhabitants of his, this land. May Mary, Mother of God, keep us in her sight and under her maternal protection. To her I entrust my ministry in this vicariate of Southern Arabia, and I entrust all of you to her maternal love. May the Most High keep and protect you all. And I humbly ask that you would pray for me and for my ministry. Blessed be God forever. His glory is the living human being. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived in the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven. And the seat of the right hand of God for the power of the mighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us pray for the Church in our vicariate and for the world and bring before the Lord the needs of all people. That Christ may fill our Holy Father, Pope Francis, with the zeal, courage, and joy of his disciples. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O God. That Christ may strengthen our new Bishop Paolo to bring the good gospel of mercy peace and healing and hope to all the people in our vicariat and be a faithful laborer in the Lord's harvest. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Christ. That Christ may bestow the gift of his peace through the actions of his believers on all the nations and rulers especially in the countries of our vicariate. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Christ. That Christ may grant healing to those who share in his cross by their patient suffering. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear that Christ may enable all of us who form this church in this vicariate to answer his call and live as his new creation, spreading the good news of God's kingdom in our families and communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Christ. That Christ may be the everlasting joy of all the faithful departed, 
whose names are written in heaven, especially those who have labored for the gospel in our vicariate. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Christ. Almighty and eternal God, in Christ your Son, you have shown your glory to the world. Guide the work of your church. Help it to proclaim your name and persevere in faith and to bring your salvation to people everywhere for Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look upon the offering of the people consecrated to you, O merciful God, and through the power of this sacrament, Grant that the multitude of those who believe in you may constantly be made a chosen race, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a people of your own, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. O Lord, Holy Father, O mighty and eternal God, for when your children were scattered off by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Holy Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that our people formed on one by the unity of the Holy Trinity, May the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might to pray to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest at the church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you. And with joy we proclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, our church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Paolo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, Un with him, un in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by a divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, then will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, I, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be with you.
Let us pray. O God, who constantly feed and strengthen the church with your sacrament, grant to us who have been nourished by the heavenly table that by obeying your teachings of love we may become for the human family a life-giving living and miss the salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the blessing, I would like to express once more my deep gratitude, first of all, for the beloved Pope Francis for sending me in this wonderful church, this beautiful church. And deep gratitude to Bishop Paul Hinder. May the Lord reward him for all the precious good 
he has done, is still doing, and will continue to do in the future for the Vicariate. My gratitude is also for Monsignor Crispin Dubiel, Chair of the Affair of Apostolic Initiator in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for all he has done and for encouraging me from the beginning of my appointment. My greetings to their highnesses, the presidents and rulers of these nations, civil authorities, and all the people living in the United Arab Emirates, Sultanate of Oman and Yemen. May the Lord of Peace, the God of Peace and Joy, continue to show the blessing of peace and joy in our nations. I express my particular concern for those in need, especially the people and children in Yemen, who long suffered the conflict in their country. May peace and justice reign in all hearts. My extended gratitude goes to all the priests, men and women religious, and the lay faithful in this vicariate, in particular to those who are involved directly in the pastoral work. I strongly wish to know all of them and to collaborate with them for the people of God. A special thank you to all the brothers who live in the bishop's house. It is a great pleasure to be so warmly welcomed. Thank you for your gracious help. I greet with joy pastors and leaders of different churches and religions. I look forward to work with you to build a better human family in this part of the world. Heartfelt thanks to the delegation of the Diocese of Milan, where I had to the joy of being an auxiliary bishop for eight years. His Excellency Luca Raimondi, auxiliary bishop, some also an Episcopal vicars, Monsignor Bruno Marinoni, Monsignor Luca Bressan, Monsignor Carlo Azimonti, the spokesman of the Archbishop of Milan, Don Walter Magni. All of them came from Milan for this occasion. I am very grateful for this sign of friendship. I have learned many important things about the pastoral care from the Diocese of Milan, especially from the archbishops, Cardinal Angelo Scola and Monsignor Mario Delpini. I strongly hope that the relationship between the Vicariate of Southern Arabia and the Diocese of Milan can improve. As the Archdiocese of Milan is also a church, church made by people from different countries, we can help one another in our pastoral work. Many thanks also to the Provincial Minister of the Capuchin Province of Milan, Brother Angelo Borghino, and the other friars. I hope the link with my original province will grow better. Thanks be to God for all I receive from the Capuchin province in formation and in spiritual life. My deep gratitude is also for all those who prepared the liturgy of my installation in such a beautiful way especially the parish of St. Joseph. Altar servants, ministries, and the choir. And for you all, my 
sisters and brothers, dear faithful who are gathered together this evening in St. Joseph's Cathedral for the Holy Mass, for the installation, especially those who have come from different countries of the Gulf and all who live in these countries of the Apostolic Vicariate. May the Lord give you all peace and joy now and forever. Following this Mass, the new bishop will process through St. Joseph's Cathedral, as well as outside in St. Therese and the Parish Hall, to give his blessing to all those who are present here today. We request all the faithful to remain standing in your seats for this blessing and to follow any instructions given by the volunteers. We regret that it will not be possible today for the faithful to remain for prayer in the church or to pray outside at the grotto of Mother Mary. We request your kind cooperation to follow the instructions of the volunteers to exit the church premises in a speedy and safe manner. Thank you very much in advance. The priests and the religious will have a photo taken with the new bishop after his blessing. Please stay in your seats and the volunteers and Father Cheeto will direct you on how to exit to the school building after this mass for the photo. Let us all stand and receive the apostolic blessing from our new bishop. The Most Reverend Father Paolo Martinelli, by the grace of the Apostolic See, Vicar of the same Apostolic See in this Holy Church of Southern Arabia, will now give the Apostolic Blessing with a plenary indulgence in the name of our Most Holy Father, Pope Francis, to all those present who are truly penitent and have confessed their sins and received Holy Communion. Pray to God for our Most Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Paolo, and for Holy Mother Church, and strive by holiness of life to walk in full communion with it. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Through the intercession of the blessed apostle. Peter and Paul, may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Praise be to God.
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah.